All right, greetings traders. Sam here from TradeDevils.com and TradeDevilsIndicators.com. Now today we're looking at our support and resistance indicator. And I have in front of us here, this is a 1597 tick chart of the Russell 2000. This is the September RTY here. And I have on the chart, as I always do, I have our initial balance indicator just to kind of frame the day for us. Right? And then I have our custom toolbar as I'll often reach for some of these tools as we work through the video. All right, so let, let's let's look at what's happening here. So this, as it's applied now, this is just the default setting. So it's using a strength or a bar count of 16 on either side. And it's automatically drawing these support and resistance levels for me. Now we're giving you a lot of flexibility with regards to the level of detail that you'd like to see that support and resistance. Because certainly you could look at this and say, oh, well, it looks like that that could be support. And oh, maybe, maybe this up, up here is resistance. So, you know, hey, why, why are those not being counted here? Here. Well, we're, you, you have the capability if you want to be, get that granular with it. Now, 1597 is, is, pretty, is pretty large for the RTY if you're, a, if you're a day trader here. If you're a swing trader, probably be perfectly adequate. But for a day trader, that, that's probably larger than you'd want. You might even be down on a, I don't know, a 377 or a 512 or a one-minute chart. And then, you, then, of course, that's going to change radically, which I'll show you once we get into the once we get into the parameters here. But I want you to understand that, see, I, what I used to do, I, mean, I used to do a lot of this. I, I would just, I would draw it on the chart. I'd say, okay, well, that looks like that was support there. Or this is potentially the support. Oh, well, you know, I probably would have drawn this up here as well, kind of giving me that, that overlap here. Oh, you know, so it was a lot of drawing, which which could be cumbersome. And then if it got too crowded, you know, you delete it. And now you got to start over again. Then we introduced this into the toolbar where you could say, okay, I'm just going to click there. And it's same thing. It'll gravitate to the wick and it'll just highlight for me. Oh, well, now there's there's the resistance at the next level. So this is the larger. You might think of this as the larger degree. This is the smaller degree. And then you do the, do the same thing on every wick and every pivot. But again, what happens is as they break, so if we, if we get beyond here and new levels are getting established then you'll you'll delete these as I would often do and then if it if it comes back down here and you're here and now we're back down here you're like oh hey wait a minute do I do I want that back in there now you're back to oh maybe I'll have to draw that in well if you want to get that kind of detail we, we you were, we're giving you the capability to let the indicator do it for you automatically so you never have to worry about deleting it getting it out of the way of course with the indicator you could show or hide it but i i, I think it would be very rare that you'd want to do that but what i'm trying to emphasize here is that while i'm looking at a 1597 here if for example i wanted to say okay i'm, I'm going to trade off of the 1597 but i want to see the 5000 tick chart support and resistance well, I could do that. If I wanted to look at the five minute support and resistance, I could add that. If I wanted to look at the 10,000 volume support and resistance, I could add that and the indicator will calculate that and put it on the chart for me automatically. I think to really appreciate that, we've got to go look at the uh, parameters within the, within the indicator. So let's do that. All right, so now I'm inside. I've opened up the indicator here, and you can see here on the support and resistance here. I just want to go over a couple of your options here with regards to the, the level of detail of support and resistance that you'd like to see. So this is the default here. Now, you'll, we're going to give you a couple of different ways to view these support zones, and then whether or not you want to include some multi time frame. So for example, on the drop down here, I can see it as wick, which is how I prefer it. So this, we default to this. So I want to see that wick. I want to get the entire range. Same thing down here or up here. I want to see that. But if, for example, I just wanted to see the line, I could do it that way. I could just say, OK, give me the pivot high and the pivot low. Or I could do just the close. If I apply that, now we're doing just the close. I could do that, but I, I missed some detail there. Or I could do an average. I could do it that way and say, okay, well, let's average it out. Now, sometimes here it ends up being just the, the, the bodies. But uh, here, okay, I'm kind of in, in between. So I, I think you're better suited to work with the wick and get it that way so I can see the full range. So I get a support zone rather than, or a resistance zone rather than a line. My, my, my suggestion, but you can change it as you like. Now, again, the default here is strength left and to the right. So uh, the defaults to 16 bars on either side of it for that to hold up. But you can change these to whatever your, pre your preference is. Number of zones that you want to show. 
you know, 10 is probably a reasonable number to, to start with here. And then down here, some a little nuance here, whether do you want to see the price? Now you'll note here, I can spot those prices here because it's bracketing that range and give, giving me those prices. If I don't want to see the price for whatever reason, I can just turn them into a zone. And I, you know, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that, but again, I, it could be you've got something on the right or just screen real estate, but we're giving you that option. So you can see the price or you can see it or you can choose not to and just look at the lines. Now, you could also do something like this where you could say, okay, I just want to see a, a zone. So, for example, where that might come into play is if I if I kept these active, but I wanted to see broken zones. But I, I So I have the choice here. I can see broken lines and zones and apply that. Now, if I pull this over here, you can see I've got all, the same thing. All these lines and zones are outlined here, and I've got that kind of detail. What I tend to do, because I like to see per broken zones, I take the lines off. So I apply it this way. So I've got these prior zones here, because I'm not so concerned about that price. I, I just want to see, because often you'll find that the market will retest these zones here. So let me pull this off and show you an example of that. So here was a prior resistance zone. So you can see the market traded right up to it. Now this is you know, time of day doesn't really matter here, but you get the point here. So we trade into that resistance zone and it gets rejected. Now we're up, up, up. We get through, but you'll note up, upon, oh, come here. Upon, oh, I guess it won't let me do it because I have that. I have this open. But uh, I, this is what I wanted to show you. So you can see upon the the the, the push up where we, we bump into this zone on the retrace here. Now I'm back right into the middle of that zone before it pushes off, right? It's kind of the same thing here. We get through, little retest. Yeah, we go, the wicks get below it, and then we're above. So that, that's how I tend to use it because I don't want to lose track of those prior support and resistance zones. They have a habit of coming back into play in the market. But again, it's entirely up to you as to how you want to choose to view that. Now, additionally, beyond that, we go into the, giving you the choice to use some higher time frame. So for example, I'm on a 1597 tick chart, which might be in a, oh, here on the RTY, that's probably pretty close to a five minute chart. Yeah, but what, what, so for example, if I wanted to say, well, I want to see the 15 minute support and resistance. So let's use multi time frame. So now if I apply that, pull this off here. You can see here I've got my my broken zones, right, where I'm just, just I just want to see that zone here, right, could be, right, we come back, tap it, off we go. So essentially the double bottom. Then here are my 15 minute levels here. So this, this rather than just the wicks that we were looking at before, now because that's a 15 minute range, I'm getting support and resistance. I can change that to whatever I like, right? I can change that to, you know, if I, if, if I want to use the, well, so, so for example, see so if I'm on a 1597 and I want to use a 5,000 tick, I could do that. So we're giving you the full suite of tools here, of, of bar types that you could view to use for that multi time frame analysis if that's beneficial to you. So lots of choices in terms of what kind of support and resistance levels you're referring to in, with regards to the, 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 the period type or the bar type. And then, right, I mean, I could change this to 60 or five or one, whatever you like there. Next up, alerts. So a new, a, a new zone gets created, a, an alert can pop for that so that you're aware of it. And then a break of a zone right which I so I keep those on I like those to be on and active and of course choose whatever sound file that you'd like amongst your what, what's available to you in your sound files but I do keep those on because I want to know about it and then color choices is pretty straightforward but so for example I think our default is a is a crimson and a, and a forest green that, that's a little dark for me so I lighten these here I think that's a sea foam and kind of a, an orchid so I can see it depends on the background color you have for your charts now since mine is this slate gray I want these to be a little bit brighter so at a, at a glance I can see those prices same same thing here but it Customized to your parts content, whatever you prefer, including the text font. So if that's too small for your eyes, right, make it bigger. Giving you those choices, the rest of this is just standard Ninja Fair, right, in terms of uh, this, I'm assuming, right, if you're using Ninja, you understand that. But these are where you've got some, some power in terms of what you want to look at. So we and the beauty of this is that it's happening automatically, All right? So, uh, for example, oh, let's see, let me, uh, here, I, I could do it, uh, I can do this here if we haven't. I might, oh, no, I can't because I'm not connected to data feed. That's what because Sunday here. If this is active, I can pick any one of the area. I could do it this way. I could pick that little wick down there and just with the click of this, that'll give me those support and, and, and resistance zones here. Oh, let's see another one here where I, I might. Uh, oh, so I could I could draw it out this. 
wrong one, hang on. I could draw it out this way. I could say, okay, that little wick right there. And I used to do that all the time. I would be constantly drawing these little boxes. Then we added this to the toolbar where I could just click it and it would just give me the wicks. It would just gravitate to the wicks. I could click it and it would give me that those supply and demand zones. Now we've just built it into an indicator so I don't have to keep doing it and keep erasing it as the market moves to and through, which can be, and then you end up you end up doing this and then you, you kind of lose them because you click them all off. Everything's gone. Now you now do you go back, right? Do I do it again? It's, it's still it still would be active su support here now I got to draw it across right it was just cumbersome right just so this is doing it via this indicator here's one you're not going to miss anything two you get that flexibility to incorporate a larger time frame into your shorter term analysis and then you don't have to keep drawing and erasing drawing and erasing right when they break you want them off the chart just set the hide broken if you want to keep them on because they're potential reference again that's how I use it. So we're giving you a lot of choices there. Oh, you know, kind of the same thing. Oh, well, that's got ahead of myself. Oh, I guess you can see it here in the NASDAQ. So the, the reason I had that on here is because, uh, oh, for those of you that perhaps are aware of this, right, this was a just a textbook measured move here. And then I was just kind of fussing with it here. I'm digressing, I know. But if I put all the measured moves on here, if you're not familiar with that algorithm, you, that, that would, I think, be helpful to you. Every green line here is that algorithm hitting its target. But the big one that I was just <clears throat> kind of outlining here is this one, right? There's right to a 50, and it hits its target. Here, it's got a little more oomph in it, but it gets the target right there. All right, so that should give you plenty, and then you can see how this is incorporated. So the support zone here is right down here at this 50, and this, well, we've got kind of a, a confluence zone here. And then, right, again, again we go. Now we're at all-time high, so we have no resistance. Then we can just... You can take those on and off. Very useful tool, right? I, I have it on every chart that I that I work with, right? It's just become part of my my default templates. I will always have those on there, and it's just a time saver. Very valuable, and I think um, will help you in your trading. So there you go. I, hopefully that's useful to you. Keep in mind you can always download any of our indicators. We give you a five day five it's five five trading day trial to use any and all of them for free. Right, so try it out. See if it's it's useful to you. If it's a time saver and you find value in it, well, I think you'll uh, find it as useful as I do. Okay, there you go. Have a good afternoon. Happy trading.